Photography is, is something you need to, to commit. It's something you cannot do without putting 100% into it. That's what I learned. It's something you have to really do with your heart. Photography is multifaceted. It's not just one thing. It brought me in contact with many people I would have probably never met before or after or again. Photography really was also a great way of, um, of living. Hello, I'm uh, Uli Weber, I'm a photographer, and I'm here to talk about myself, how I started, where I am, where I would like to go with my work. It all started, as for so many photographers, it's probably a joke, but yes, Dad's camera uh, started me off, moved on um, to other things, as you are when you're 16. <laughs> um, did my A-levels in Germany, and after that, I, I decided to move to Rome. Uh, I lived three years in Rome, where I studied photography. I did two years of uh, photography class, actually, in those three years, and um, I um, enjoyed it. Loved Rome, loved La Dolce Vita Italiana, after this sort of uh, German... Uh, upbringing, which was great too, but it was time to move on. And I moved to London. I started doing lots of portraits, uh, lots of bespoke portraits, covers for magazines, uh, very few private commissions at a time. I lived mostly in a suitcase, traveling the world between um, London as a home, Milan, lots of clients, New York, lots of times in New York. Always dabbled with the idea of maybe living there. I never did. I don't regret it, but it uh, would have been nice maybe. But London was just too good. Loved London, and I still do like it. It's a fantastic town. I've been everywhere. I mean, I've been to the North Pole. I parachuted onto the North Pole for out of a Russian jet in Yushin 76, uh, via Siberia, went to Moscow, went to Madagascar, to the baobab trees. I've been to God knows how many times America, been to South America. At the beginning of my photography, you meet people like Sting, Kylie Minogue at the time. She was the hottest thing in London. You meet Kate Moss, etc. But it's a job, and uh, they very much want you to do a, a great photograph of them, and you're there to do that. So you work together, and you create this magic with them, and they know, they know when it works. In photography, it's crucial the report you have with people. When you work with celebrities or stars or, or, or very normal people who, who never have been photographed. It's important that you get that special moment going with them and it's, that's part of the secret and to make it look effortless. Eventually I spoke to um, a friend, a client, uh, Ivan Shaw. He was at the time the photographer director of uh, of Vogue America, who, was, uh, who had commissioned me for 10 years to do lots of portraits for, for Ivan, for Anna Winter. I said, look, Ivan, I would like to do a book, maybe a collection of my 20 years of, uh, of portraits. Uh, would, you, would you be so kind and write a foreword? He was delighted to be asked. He said, of course. And uh, Skira, great Italian publishing house, uh, created this book called Portraits. It's amazing. Um, I'm looking at Uli's Portraits book, which we I wrote the foreword to and from 2010. And it's amazing to look back on the work that we did and the title of my piece for it, which was Fellow Travelers. And, um, and Uli and I really were fellow travelers and continue to be. Um, it was an amazing experience working with him for all those years and all the work that we did as I, when I was photo director of Vogue. Um, of course, my favorite from that time is Samantha Morton, which Uli knows. Um, I think it's a wonderful portrait. Uli had this amazing idea to get a London taxi that was decked out in kind of an Indian fashion. Um, I had never seen one of these taxis and it sounded kind of like a kooky idea at the time, but I trusted him and I said, go for it. And of course he took this amazing photograph of Samantha and it really feels like a, a modernist moment and sort of Russian constructivist, but it's actually beautiful and sort of 
you see her prowess as an actor and her beauty. Um, it's just a wonderful portrait and it really is evocative of the time and things that were going on in film and in London during that time. Um, the other picture I absolutely love that we did together was The Hives, which was, they were the band in the early 2000s. And I sent Uli up to Northern England to photograph him. I think he had about 15 minutes in total to photograph him, but of course he did like four amazing portraits and he completely captured the band in this incredible sky. And so this, he just had an intuitive understanding of what we were looking for in Vogue. And that was really the thing you always looked for, a photographer that really understood the magazine. They had their own point of view and the work that they wanted to do, but they also kind of understood where you were as a magazine visually and aesthetically. And Uli always kind of understood that. We just had this really natural rapport working together. And even in the times, when the pictures didn't work out that well, we still walked away from those experiences with mutual respect, and we still felt that we had done our best, and um, and that was rare. Most of the time, it went really, really well. We had wonderful photographs. So um, he's an extraordinary talent, and it's amazing to see the body of work that he's done and continues to work on. We launched it uh, to quite a few exhibitions. We had exhibitions in, uh, in London, in Milan, in New York, at a gallery in Madison Avenue, in, in Lecce, a town I, I, I come a lot in Italy. And we did three, four or five exhibitions around the world, got great reception. It was a milestone for me to do my first ever photographic book with a collection of, 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 of portraits I was proud of. Uh, So my next step, uh, by the invitation of a very kind man, the Duke of Richmond, he invited me down to, to Goodwood, Goodwood Revival. It's possibly the, the most amazing vintage car race. The Duke invited me down because I did a portrait of him, uh, which he very much liked. And he said, look, come bring your camera for the revival, which I did. And I came back the next year another three days, so half a day 2012, three days uh, 2013, and I had another photographic book uh, about this uh, wonderful uh, event called the Goodwood Revival. Uh, again, Skira uh, did it for me. We, we launched uh, the second coffee table book, as you would call them, and it was the exact opposite to my previous uh, book. It was all reportage. It was just like me and other, you know, lots of other photographers, but I, I managed to get, I don't know, 160 pages of, uh, of, the, of, of, of the event. And, and it, it turned out to be an award-winning book, uh, which was greatly received, uh, second edition out now, quotes by Sir Jackie Stewart, Sir Sterling Moss, the Duke, Nick Mason from Pink Floyd, they all loved it, they all gave me wonderful quotes. So that was purely a reportage, loved it, got, got really down and dirty. No, no team, just yourself, the camera, and that was it. The Duke of Richmond, in his forward for the Goodwood Revival, mentioned that it will be part of the everlasting story of uh, Goodwood Revival to this book. So, chapeau! I was like, wow, that's a that's a that's a wonderful compliment as a, as a photographer, you know, going into becoming part of history of such an event. Moved on. Um, in the meantime, lots of commissions. Lots of other projects, lots of series are made, uh, more kind of fine art related. I was moving into more kind of bespoke my own photography, uh, doing series of stuff I like, nobody, uh, you know, stuff I personally wanted to photograph. Quite different subjects. Uh, I think Brodovich, once the great art director from, uh, from Harper's Bazaar, he said, why have bacon every morning, you know? And I felt the same with my photography. I can do many other things uh, instead of just doing one white background or this or that or cars. big milestone was The Allure of Horses, another book, a beautiful book I published with um, 
Azuline, Azuline, the, the fine French publisher. It's an homage to the English horse world, from, from the fine stables to the wonderful stately homes, to the, uh, the people who work with horses, the people who, uh, the horsesmiths, the people who drag out wood from forests, uh, the horse market in, in Dublin, to beautiful people of the English society with their horses. It's a very strange mix, horses in England. Everybody loves them and I thought it's a great subject. It became also a little way of saying thank you to England because England, the UK, has been great to me for the last 30, over 30 years. So after the revival, after the cars, the vintage English cars, the horse I thought was a great follow-up. It's a very successful publication, uh, so beautifully it, uh, fine art, people like buying the big prints, uh, it's, it's a nice thing. And in the meantime, I, I carried on doing my, my, my bespoke work, my series, my commissions. I still have great clients I like to work with. Uh, they let me have freedom. Uh, lots of time they, people say, look, do something for us, just do what you do best. And it's nice when you're at that point in your career, when you're allowed to to do your own thing, and I'm, I'm, I'm glad, glad I have those clients. In my photography recently, I did a shoot for, for Hackett Polo. Steve Wallington, a fantastic art director, we said, look, what can we do? And we came up with a, with a wonderful set of pictures which were then exhibited at Christie's. Uh, I had a two-day exhibition in their big hall in London in St. James's. Uh, I mean, wonderful. How often, how often do you get a chance to show your work in the windows of Christie's? Photography also brought me in contact with many people, people I would have probably never met before or after or again. It, it, it's, it's, a real, it's a real blessing, it's something you have to embrace, you can't, you can't cheat. Uh, people, you, people know if you cheated, it's something, they know if it's, if it's, if it's real what you do with them or not, they, they like the same commitment. The shoot I did with Oscar Niemeyer in his studio in Rio de Janeiro, we, we barely spoke. I mean, Mr. Niemeyer, you know, the great architect, one of the legends of architecture. I mean, we hardly spoke to each other, but at the end of the day, we kind of connected and I did a nice series of portraits of uh, Mr. Niemeyer, and that was great. You know, how would I ever met Niemeyer? Same Achille Castiglioni, the legend, the sign legend of, uh, of many great, uh, you know, pieces of design we, we still use now, Achille Castiglioni. I spent a day with Achille Castiglioni in Milan in his studio, you know. A wonderful nice anecdote was at 11 o'clock, Mr. Castiglioni said, oh, Achille, he said, look, io mi faccio adesso un Campari. I did, you know, Mr. Castiglioni, oh, Achille, I have, I, I share a Campari with you. I have a Campari as well. And he looked at him with a big smile and he said, oh, it's a Camparista. And I said, yes. <laughs> so we're in a Campari at 11 in the morning, a few nipples, and then we carried on and uh, spoke about his work. What a memorable moment. Thank you to a photography. Not to forget a time uh, when I gave a quick appearance on the Oprah Winfrey television show in the 90s. So fashion models know all the tricks of the trade to looking their best in a photograph. Here's some professional secrets on how you can take the perfect picture. Hi Oprah, I'm Willie Weber, I'm a photographer. And, I did. Uh, it was a short interview, how to make yourself look in front of the camera. So Oprah sent a film team round and I gave a few tips. And uh, the first one is stay far from the camera. I mean quite a reaction because Oprah at the time really was the hottest thing on American TV and uh, yeah, it was great I, mean, uh, I enjoyed it. Uh, last one I think uh, you smile with your lips closed. We're learning how to do everything better. <laughs> Photography really was a gift in my life. Um, it's a gift because you meet, you meet many wonderful people, many interesting people. Not always easy. Uh, you have to 
you have to make sure you, you, you get your photo. You can't, you know, you can't get sidetracked too much. You can't be starstruck either. You have to, you have to tell them what you want. It's very important. <laughs> At the end of the day, you're the photographer. And if you don't get a good picture, then, you know, so, so no, so, so no problemi, as they say in Italy. Photography really was also a great way of um, of living. And there's always something. I get up in the morning and I'm excited when I do a photo, and I'm still, you know what? I'm still slightly scared when I do. And there's a new, a new, a new idea I have, or a new uh, commission came in, a new project, a new book. Uh, it's something you go, oh, little butterflies, you know, a little. Uh, can we do that? Yeah, we can. Uh, but it's always a challenge, photography, and I, I, I still appreciate that. It's not something you do. I can do it sleeping, you know. I, yes, I can do it almost sleeping photography, but it's something you, you want to do. You want to do very well, and you want to you want to put your heart into it. I also should say thank you to a few people uh, in my who helped me in my career, who were very very supportive. My agents. Uh, they are makeup people I work with, stylists, art directors, clients, um, yeah, assistants, photo assistants, very important. And uh, would like to say thank you because it's something you can do many times by yourself and other moments you, you, you work as a team, you work as a team, you work together. Luckily, I have very nice people I like to work with. I mean, the, the good thing is, most of the times I can pick them. Another clients, wish I could do that, but <laughs> not yet. Yeah.